Hey there, hey, it's Michelle with Brilliant Quest. And I wanna ask you, are you an overthinker? Is your mind constantly racing? Does it take you a lot of effort to get simple stuff done? Because you got so many different approaches and ways and things to do. Well, if that's you, stick with me because we're just gonna have a little impromptu masterclass for overthinkers. So get on in here, cousin, because we got some things to talk about. All right, so I did not I did not make notes for this because I wanted it to be a little conversational with you. I say that as some notes <laughs> fall out of my lap. So let me just put that over there. See, no hands, no hands, mom. Um, but I, I just really kind of want to talk to you because we are inundated now with our minds racing. It's like we're living different lives. We're living the lives that people can see. And then we're living a whole nother life up in our brains and our minds with all of the stuff that we're being inundated with. And I just need you to know that it is not just you. And it's not something particular to you. More and more people are having overactive thinking. Now, you notice I didn't say imagination because if we had, and y'all, I'm sorry, my hair, she, you know, she, she wants to say hello. You know, she's, uh, anyway, she's acted up. Um, yes, she has her own personality and she's, she's being good, but she's trying to get in my eye. So forgive me for, you know, doing that. Um, but get it back, focus. Okay. But many people are finding that they are so busy with the different things that need to happen. I'm talking about just events and processes that they're getting less and less creative. And so overthinking is now becoming the, the, the assassin of creative thinking. And I did a, a previous um, uh, episode where I, I mentioned that if you are unmotivated, tired and feeling lousy, a lot of times it's because your creative muscle has atrophied. It's paralyzed. And when you can't create, you tend to lose the ability to thrive in life. And overthinking does not mean that you're being creative. And it's a doggone shame that that is the case. And so I was like, hmm, let me let me just talk about this. And I'm talking about it because now that I am in the mix, I am back, baby. I've talked about how, you know, for seven years, my mind was, oh, she was doing me dirty. Um, but now that I'm back in the mix, I'm able to become even more aware of how I think because I'm a, I'm a big thinker, uh, excuse me, a big believer on being able to pull away and understand you're not your mind, you're not your brain, you're above that. So you have the ability to observe how you think about something because when you can pull yourself out, you can make changes because you're not that thing helpless. You can change the way you, you operate with your mind. And so because of that, I started realizing that, oh my gosh, I was overthinking and it had nothing to do with the creative process. It had nothing to do with mulling over and chewing over and meditating on an idea to form it in my mind. Um, the, the whole issue that I was finding as to why I was languishing and why it, I was so unmotivated is because my mind was racing, but it was racing on loops of just the mundane things of, oh, don't forget I got to do this. Okay, check that. Make sure I uh, sign up for that. Make sure I cancel that. You know, all of the stuff that we now do and call it life. Um, I'm gonna try to do this from memory. So if it's fuzzy, if it's off, please forgive me. Um, the other day I was uh, researching some stuff for an upcoming um, video and I ran across uh, some statistics for attention. And the guy was saying that back in the 1950s, when um, the U.S. and, you know, the, the, the powers that won uh, World War II were really, you know, starting to grow and the capitalism and the market was growing, that they thought, oh, my God, this is it. Um, because there were billboards going up. You had, you know, Times Square really, you know, becoming a thing and uh, commercials, soap operas, you know, whole programming made for the purpose of advertising soap, dishwashing liquid and things to help you clean your house, you know, for the housewives. And he said that at the time, the average person, and he thought this was a big deal. The average person encountered 50 ads a day. Woo, 50. Cut to today. And this is what he said. He said that the average person encounters 100,000 ads a day. 100,000. He's like in the peak hours, around 10,000 inputs in an hour of just stuff coming at you constantly facing you. And it's no wonder we're having to compartmentalize and do more overthinking just to run our lives. Because with those ads, you're going to buy something. And when you buy something, it's going to have to be maintained. And then, you know, I have this thing where I like knowing the flow of something. So if you've got the flow of where you understand that the extreme, we've talked about this, if you've been rocking with me, the extreme becomes normalized, then the normal becomes required. 
And then the required becomes grotesque. And so now we have moved from the extreme of 50 ads a day being something that was like, woo, to 100,000 ad impressions a day. I would call that grotesque. I really would. And when you're trying to live in this, this world with all the trappings of what society deems that you must have, if you don't keep up, you become ostracized. If you become ostracized, you run the risk of not having a healthy life for a long time. Not just, you know, because, you know, people shun you. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> it's kind of hard right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. It's kind of hard right now living without your mobile. Ask me how I know. I lost my cell phone in Spain, Barcelona to be exact, on a 21 day trip that I was taking. And this was recent. This was in last, it's not a bit less than 18 months, right? I lose my phone. I don't have a phone because I'm an American in Europe. Any phone I buy there is only going to work in Europe. So why buy a phone there that's going to cost as much as the phone I had here was going to cost for 20 days? That makes sense. Lost it the first day, by the way. Oh, baby. When I had to go through an entire almost three-week vacation through uh, Europe, I'm talking about Spain, and France, and Greece. Oh, my honey. It was not fun. And it showed me that this is now a requirement that you have a phone. I got locked out of my bank accounts. I got locked out of um, uh, platforms that I needed to run my business because guess what? They all wanted me to verify through text message or some kind of authenticator that lives on your phone. And it had to be your phone because trust me, I tried using strangers and they'd be like, who this? This fraud. <laughs> Try it again and we're going to shut it all down. And so I, I was just, ugh, my saving grace for me to be able to do anything that I had. Thankfully, I had my iPad with me. And so I was able to use some, you know, I've had to do some things, but not all. But it just was really a wake up call to, yeah, there's a reason why you overthink. It's because we have all of these new requirements to live. If you told somebody just even from the 1970s, um, you're going to leave this house without a phone and you're going to suffer. You're going to stay lost. <laughs> you're not going to know where to go. <laughs> you're not going to be able to communicate. You're going to run the risk of being in, in trouble with either your business or your company because you're not tethered to them to get electronic messages and emails that they're trying to send you. They would have looked at you like, you cuckoo. That's a hailscape. <laughs> but yet and still, this is where we live. And so I wanted to just be like to make you aware that I need you to check. Are you overthinking? Because there is a problem. It kills your ability to grow and, and, and foster um, a sense of well-being. Using all of this time just to keep the plate spinning of what it takes to live in this world means that and now here's the point that I, I really want to drive home. You must consciously develop almost like a, a, an, another appendage, but another uh, focus and primary uh, objective to fight, to be creative. So Michelle, how does that look? Well, first of all, identifying what is overthinking. Overthinking is, and I don't, I, you know, I don't like to always be categorical because everybody does not think the same, whether we want to believe it or not. But these are going to be generalities and maybe similarities. But overthinking is going to be something that is running kind of like a back program. You find yourself making mental notes and tasks and lists or ruminating, fixating, and looping. I'm going to say them again. Ruminating, fixating, and looping. When you're overthinking, you are ruminating on things that you should do. And I've already talked about having a shoulds list to get all that stuff out of your head and onto paper where it can live outside your head. The fixation on trying to find different angles to approach something, to problem solve it. And the looping where you're continuously playing the same thing over and over again to the point where sometimes it can be an intrusive thought where you're shaking your head like, I don't want to think about that right now. Those are all uh, generalities and similarities for what overthinking might look for you. Well, what does creative thinking look like? Creative thinking looks like a spark that comes. You see something and you're like, oh, and then your mind cook is like, it's like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if? And then you start creating these different scenarios, approaches, and maybe something that's never existed because you got that spark and it, it, it plays fancifully in your mind. It uh, makes you excited because it's entertaining. It is not where you feel in, enslaved to it, but rather you feel invigorated by it because it takes you into a realm of what ifs that look really good. You know, that's creativity. And we have to have that. I don't care who you are. I, I talked uh, previously about the need for creativity to help you to stay motivated. You know, 
there are different little, you know, semantics that we can use uh, about uh, motivation and discipline and determination and all these things. But what I will say is you understand what I mean when I say motivation and creativity. You understand that creativity is a uh, force given and blessed to humans to be able to take something out of nothing, out of their minds, and then either put it in action or make it into something tangible in this world. Looping overthinking thoughts do not do that. They continuously run you instead of you running them. And more and more society is requiring us to overthink based on all of the things we have to contend with. You know, think about the last time you were able to feel, feel free to just turn everything off, not have to have your phone within arm's reach, not have to be on alert for is somebody trying to, you know, text me or uh, do I need to be alert for this or that or an alarm is going off or what is required for work or any of those things? It's been a long time. And I'm going to tell you, this is the killer of it. We have been programmed and bred to overthink without creation so much that when you take away these things and give us the freedom to sit and create without them around, a high percentage of people become paralyzed with anxiety, boredom, panic depression because the overthinking has taken over so much that it's like a drug that we don't even know we're on. And what happens when you take a drug from an addict? The withdrawal is, is, is mightily terrible. And we didn't, we didn't even realize that we are on these constant loops of mental power of all of the things that it takes to run our lives. But if you give us the very freedom to get a break, we'll be fiending for the constant things that get us to want to, uh, that, that make us run our lives. And so overthinking. All right. So because like I said, I, I did not want to, you know, have any notes or anything like this. I just kind of want to off the top of my head, tell you some of the things that I have been doing to get myself back into a creative state. And for me, creativity is how I have to feed myself. So, you know, that's, it's doubly hard on me trying to uh, make sure that I consciously and purposefully give myself opportunity for creativity. Um, th there's a, a statement that's been around for a while uh, when you want to poke the creative part of your, your body. And it's one that I use. And I'm going to share it with you in case you didn't realize this is what it is. And it is when you ask yourself, wouldn't it be nice if that's one of them? Another one is a kind of like a discovery one of just to discover what creative things you can get into. And that is, why hasn't anyone done or why hasn't anyone created or why, you know, it's why hasn't something been created? So the first one is kind of a, a fanciful take on what your whimsy is. So that one is, wouldn't it be nice if? The other one is, why hasn't anyone done X, Y, or Z? Those are a great springboard to start shifting your mind from doing the overthinking. Remember the looping, the ruminating, and the fixating to where now, you're taking control of it and you are now going into the realm of the creative. And you might say, well, Michelle, why do I need to be creative? I'm not creative. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're creative. You just have, it's a muscle that you got to learn how to wield, and, I mean, uh, build, excuse me. And we must be creative because that's who we are. We are beings having a human experience. We are here to propagate the creative ability within us, hopefully to leave this world better than we found it. Right now, so many of us are overthinking and we're in the humdrums of living this zombie uh, android life where you just animated zombies, but we're just spewing death. When you look at it, um, when's the last time you could look and say, oh, I created things that are going to live in perpetuity for the better. Yes. Instead of today, I went to work, I did the widgets, I got paid. I feel like crap. I don't want to go back. But tomorrow I'm going back. I'm going to do the widgets. I'm going to get paid. I'm going to feel like crap. You know, there's this vicious cycle of things that we must do to live in this world because this world requires that we have a phone that's no less than four years old. Oh, heaven forbid, if you get into four years, oh baby, they're trying to do everything they can. That's another, that's another rant, Michelle. But let me just finish this part. They're trying to do everything they can by updates to get you to buy a new phone. <laughs> um, you know, and, it's crazy. It's like water, cell phone. There, it's right up there now, you know. And and uh, being able to pay for that luxury uh, every month in perpetuity, never ending until you die, requires that you do have to do these things. But I'm telling you, if you make opportunity 
to start having musical flights of fancy, you're going to be amazed. And so I've rambled, I've, I've given you um, information <laughs> and uh, talked about overthinking. I've, I've, I've made my uh, appeal to you to start actively starting to, um, you know, work your creative muscle and why I think you should do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look forward to your comments of what you're doing, what you have done, your insights. I love it when y'all give me insights. I learned so much. You know, this is about us sharing. So what I want to do is I want you to get you to go on and watch this next video uh, to continue this wonderful, brilliant quest that we're on. And this is Michelle, your big sis for Brilliant Quest. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe, uh, comment, Hit the, the bell for uh, notifications. They keep telling me stuff I'm supposed to be doing. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm just, anyway, thank you. you. You know, because you're telling me to do it. But do all the things and I'm going to see you sooner than later. Bye.